Hey everybody, so today we're gonna check out what I've got right behind me here, the Atom A7X monitors. So Adam approached me about doing something back at Music Mesa, and I've had these sitting around for quite a while, and I'll admit, I was a little baffled on how I was going to use them as I have soffit mounts, and they're not quite the same size. Now, soffit mounting helps with the bottom end, and I was really concerned about losing some of the low-end thunder that my events put out. I tried putting the A7s on stands, but with the way all my room is set up, I really couldn't get them into any kind of optimal position for monitoring without completely blocking out the events. Okay, so after much back and forth, I finally decided to pull out the events and throw in the atoms. And to be honest, I'm kind of kicking myself for not doing it sooner. Powering these up for the first time was one of those moments where everything just suddenly becomes clear. It was like being able to look into a mix. The stereo image is wide and deep, but it, dare I say, it's almost three-dimensional. I am hearing things in mixes that I have never heard before. And I'm hearing things in my own mixes that I wish I could have heard before and fixed. Now it all comes down to Adam's folded ribbon driver technology. It works on a different principle than your normal silk dome tweeter like you would find on pretty much everything else. And kind of has this mechanical push-pull thing going on with the air. And sort of like how the bellows of an accordion work. What that translates into is a flat frequency response all the way up to 50 kilohertz. Now all the dogs, bats, and even Superman can have speakers too. Seriously though, it means there won't be any artifacts going on in the spectrum that you can actually hear, meaning more detail for you to make critical mix decisions with. Power-wise, we're looking at 50 watts for the tweeter and 100 watts for the woofer. In practical terms, I've cranked these up to ear-splitting levels and they simply won't distort. Please be careful with your monitoring levels as you could do some damage. These things are so loud and so clear that you could really hurt your hearing without even knowing it. Besides, you can keep your ears fresh longer with quieter listening levels. On the back, there's connections for power and XLR and RCA jacks for audio, as well as a tweeter level control and high and low shelf filters. I'd recommend leaving those flat to start and see how well your mixes translate before tweaking out those controls. It's recommended that you burn these monitors in for 24 hours, and I still haven't quite got there, although I have run some pink noise uh, through them over the last couple of days, and so far so good. That being said, I still recommend testing your mix on a car stereo, no matter how good your monitors are. Now, the true test of a monitor is how well it helps you mix. So what we're gonna do here is check out three clips from projects I've recorded in the past. In most cases, I'm using all of the same tracks, but in one case, I wound up reamping the guitars because I didn't like what I was hearing coming from the Adams. Here we go. First up, it's from my old bass strings shootout, the song Lady of Pain. Been to the edge and walked away. Next up is a track I did a couple of years ago that has an old school new wave of British metal vibe. And here's Monocles. I released this last year and it's been used as background music on numerous videos.
So with the Adams, I am noticing a bunch of things all across the spectrum. On drums, the kick, snare, and room mics become much easier to process. And what's sticking out becomes easy to pinpoint. Bass guitar, same thing but the Adams are especially great at helping me tweak out my metal guitar sound. With the first two mixes, I was able to go in and make a couple of very minor EQ tweaks to get the guitars working better in the mix. On the third example, I didn't like the sound at all, so I scratched those and re the guitars through my awesome new Coffee Custom Cab, and I was able to dial in the tone with confidence. Now, bear in mind, these are all three mixes that I had worked on previously. I'm really looking forward to tracking something from the ground up with the Adams, as I'm quite sure they'll allow me to hear things at the most critical point of all, when I'm placing the mics. The Adams retail each for 949 Canadian at Long and McQuaid. That's 749 US for my American viewers, and for our friends in Europe, that's 461 euros. I'll have links for them in the description below. I just wanted to thank Adam Audio and Dave Dysart from HHB Canada for making this video possible. I'm so impressed with the Adams that I've called up my friend Brad over at the DIY Builds channel. He's the same guy who built my desk, and he's gonna take a look at seeing what we can do with the holes that I now have in my soffits because I don't don't think I'll be putting my events back in anytime soon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.